Hi, I'm Leonard Verhagen, and today I'm going to talk about two studies where we're using low intensity focused ultrasound to modulate activity in deep brain circuits. This work was done by a larger team at the University of Oxford, and I've started my lab now at the Radboud University in the Netherlands. So together with this team, two years ago, we showed that we can use low intensity ultrasound in a repetitive manner to focally modulate neuroactivity. And specifically, when we use this repetitive ultrasound at 10 hertz for 40 seconds, this has longer lasting effects. This is important when we're aiming to develop new protocols with an impact on psychiatry, where we also hope to have longer lasting effects on the clinical impact. Now, this offline effect allows us to measure both behavioral effects, or in this case, neural effects. And we're using fMRI to map those. Specifically, if we're using resting state fMRI, we can look at the coupling of brain regions. And we found that if we target ultrasound at the anterior cingular cortex on the left, or the bilateral amygdala on the right, then we see very focal modulation of neuronal coupling. We're going to use the same protocol now in two following studies. And one here, we just did in a network that is important in deciding when to act. This involves again the anterior cingular cortex, but also the basal forebrain deep here um, in the primary brain. I'm gonna look here at the coronal slice. It's become a target for ultrasound and an acoustic simulation shows that uh, we're overshooting it a bit. So after 40 seconds of ultrasound, we're moving the transducer to the other end and stimulating for a second time. Now we have a higher focality where there's an overlap of the stimulation. Following the resting state fMRI, we were able to show that at that very focus, we see a modulation of uh, the uh, neural act activation. The question is, can we also see any changes in the rest of the brain? Namely, this brain region, the base of forebrain, is known to have projections throughout the brain, and it's important in changing from rest to activation. Now, we're going to look at the surface of the brain here, the cortex. And the color coding we're using is that if there is absolutely no change, we should only see the hotspot at the stimulation focus and everywhere else should be black as such. But instead what we observe is this widespread decoupling of pretty much the whole brain, except for a few key nodes. And this shows that even focal stimulation can have widespread network effects. And if we're interpreting the effect of ultrasound, we should take those in the neurophysiology and the connections of the brain region that we stimulate, we should take those into account. Now, in the end, we're interested to develop novel protocols to modulate behavior, again, as I mentioned, for, for example, for psychiatric disorder treatment. And one aspect here is the importance of making correct decisions. Humans often have to make decisions and we need to integrate many different features to do so. And here we asked our monkeys in a simple task to integrate two different features, the color and the number of the dots. And they both told the monkey something about the reward. But critically, the monkey was only trained on one of these features, only the color in one training set and another training set only on varying a number of dots. And now after about a year of training, the monkeys were provided with novel choices that actually relied on a correct interaction of them. We have to multiply magnet Lubeck probability to make the correct choice. There are many choices to be made. And the monkeys were trained on the gray axis that you can see over here. But on the novel day, we showed them completely new choices and indicators, for example, here by the yellow boxes. That's the choice that you see at the top as well. These novel choices relied on a brain region, um, the medial prefrontal cortex. And this becomes an interest focus for us to see what the effect of um, ultrasound would be. We're targeting this again with uh, transcranial ultrasound stimulation. We're including a sham condition where we're not stimulating anywhere on the brain. But importantly, we're also including an active control site. And that is very tightly coupled and allows us very strong inferences of the effect. And what we observed is that the monkey's behavior was only detrimentally affected. They were less able to integrate the features when we had interfered with the target at the medial prefrontal cortex. Now, our strong inferences are supported because we have such an active control site. Well, thank you very much for today.